Okay, are we recording? We're on now. What? Right, take leave this on. Take take it. Take this off. Leave, what? Take it off. I can't drink. Hey, it's happy hour. Anheuser Busch happy hour. Astro stop. Take it off. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, I'm C Swart. That's much better. I want to be safe, but I also want to drink. And it's happy hour. I'm going low cow, and uh, we're calling a uh, baseball game a little later on. Astros playing good baseball lately. Had a little rough start. Uh, had a little rough go in the middle, and then uh, they've picked it up and it's been pitching mostly. And we're starting to hear some better news. Heard some bad news. Jordan uh, news wasn't great, but he went on the IL. Hopefully, he'll be back at some point, but the pitching's been fantastic. Sounds like a lot of guys are starting to get healthy down at the alternate site in Corpus Christi, and away they go. I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, what's this, almost 40% of the way through, and uh, man, it's gonna be over before we know it, and the Astros are gonna go to the postseason again. So cheers, cheers to the postseason, and rings. Hmm. This is how pathetic I was when I was a player. Uh, oh, wow. I drink alone with <laughs> nobody else. Hey, turn that music down. Hey, unless it's epic sax guy, then you can play it. Otherwise, cut it off. Okay. Yeah. Go to Zoom. And then uh, I was so bad as a player that I never had a bobblehead of myself. But my son had a friend's mom who felt sorry for my son because he was always sad because his dad wasn't on a bobblehead like all of his other buddies' dads. So here's what she did. I was playing with the Detroit Tigers at the time, and she found a Roger Clemens bobblehead doll when he was playing with the Yankees, and she stripped it down. She took off the pinstripes, took off the navy, uh, turned the uniform into a Detroit Tigers, and then erased his name, and this is what she did. Can you see that? It's pretty good, isn't it? That used to be Roger Clemens, and now it's Steve Sparks, and my son was stupid enough to believe, he got it for Christmas, uh, that, that was real, but it wasn't. i show you something that's real. This is at the team store right now. Look at this bad boy. Bobblehead of the month. Can you see it? Look at that. Look at the hair. These are the two, in my opinion, these are the two coolest guys on the Astros. Yuli Gurriel, of course, and George Springer. And this is welcome to Yuli's barber shop. But there's so much detail on it. It's heavy. You screw the top end of the base. Uh, it's gorgeous. Man, they really did a nice job all the way around. Uh, release it in the team store that's at Union Station and also online at FOCO, F-O-C-O dot com. Uh, the Astros uh, partnered with Forever Collectibles uh, to get that online. So uh, they're individually numbered, so it's going to be a collector's item and there's a limited uh, number that they're going to produce. But man, this is, this is cool. They're 100 bucks a piece. They're going to be out pretty quick quickly, but it's bobblehead of the month. So they're going to do this every month, something new, but this is, uh, this is the most intricate bobblehead I've ever seen. So it's pretty cool. Yuli and George Springer. So go online, foco, F O C O.com or go to, uh, the team store where everything nine to nine to five Monday through Friday and nine to two on Saturday, the team store at union station where they got everything. So, Wanted to show you that. Uh, Brooks Raley is going to be my guest today. He's going to come on in just a moment. And if you don't know who Brooks is, he's a new left-handed reliever for the Astros. And uh, went to Texas A&M. And I hope he likes me. I've never met him before. So I want to make this as professional as possible. And I'll put my name tag on here so he won't forget. And he can, like, say, yeah, Steve. I remember when I played in Korea. I remember that real well. Uh, He's done great so far. And Dusty Baker's been a wizard with uh, the guys in the bullpen. So I'm interested to see what Brooks has to say uh, with how things uh, are going. Is that Brooks? 
I hear you. Brooks, thanks for doing this, man. You bet. Thanks for having me. I love what you've done with your hotel room. <laughs> you got to see the rest of it. <laughs> you know what? It stinks. I mean, I know you haven't been in the league for, for a little while, but uh, Denver and San Diego, this road trip you guys are, are on right now, uh, to be able to stay downtown, everybody loves that, being able to walk to the ball, ballpark. But you guys aren't in that mode right now, are you? No, definitely not. It's going to be a lot of hotel time and uh, a lot of delivery service food. But, I um, mean, you just got to embrace the ballpark, get out there and see the sunshine. It is a beautiful field, though. And a lot of FaceTime. You've got to be doing a lot of FaceTime. Three daughters, yeah. is that right? Yes, three daughters, three and under. So, uh, definitely talked to them this yeah. morning, and they are all fired up. They missed their nap time today, so mom was a little – Really? Yeah, mom was working extra hard today. Uh, you ever forget their names? I forget my kids' names all the time. You know, they're not there yet. They haven't got enough trouble yet to forget their names, <laughs> and you're trying to trying to get on one of them at a different time. But I'm sure at some point, yes, yeah, so all ours, I'm sure I will. All right, so if people don't know, Brooks came over to the Astros just about a week and a half ago, but uh, two lefties now in the bullpen. You've done a great job. Uh, what's it like uh, with you guys having to spread out out, out in the bullpen? Uh, but you guys have played a lot of one-run games, a lot of close games, so it's been nail-biters. Uh, everything's going pretty smoothly, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, as you said, there's there's some social distancing happening, and, and that's kind of been what's been embraced this whole season, right? You kind of come into the season knowing that there's going to be protocols and it's for our own health. Um, but you still get to have those conversations and, and talk through hitters and, and plans and um, – you know, I just try to hit the ground running over here. I had a meeting with Dusty my first day. I really kind of got to settle in and be somewhat of a veteran presence down there and, and really get, enjoy getting to know the, the younger players and rookies and whatnot. But they've done a phenomenal job with Blake getting his first save the other day and Josh and uh, Presley kind of leading up both them. So that was the conversation with Dusty more than anything is, is he needs a little help down there, doesn't he, with some, with some older guys? Yeah, I think he, he – you know, you can look at the look at the team and the way it's structured. The veteran mm -hmm. presence is always a good thing, um, especially with how young and uh, old it kind of can, can be. And, and he didn't seem to think age is a factor. I was all about it. He was like, hey, man, you, you got five years <laughs> left in you. So I was like, I'm in on this. So it was a great That's conversation, great. and I felt welcome right out of the gate and, you know, obviously wanted to do my job. And being able to play close to home, you grew up in Uvalde, uh, not too far down the road. Uh, it's about as close as it gets as far as major leagues go anyway, but uh, that's exciting, isn't it? Oh, 100%. The amount of, you know, you, you I played the big leagues, you know, in, in 12 and 13 with the Cubs and um, then starting this year with the Reds and, and going overseas for a bit, but just to see the, uh, the support from the local fans and, uh, you know, I make it back to Uvalde. My parents still live there. My brother lives there and we started a little rifle company there. So, um, still love to go back, but but the the following of the fans and, and friends and family and uh, I mean it's just pretty pretty amazing. But now living in College Station, being 90 minutes away, it's it's, it's uh, even better. I get a few nights at home. You opened up a rifle company. I did. I did. It's called Exile Tell me Firearms. About that. Yeah. So my brother and I uh, started a custom bolt action rifle company about three years ago, and you know it's something I have been passionate about. I grew up guiding and 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 kind of long range shooting, so. Wow. Um, dove right in. My brother's, my brother's the brains of the operation, and, and you know, I just we, we, we went for it and uh, had a ton of success. We were really kind of probably strapped right now with orders and whatnot, but we uh, lightweight hunting rifles, and that's just what we're passionate about. We do all top end stuff, so really excited about some new models and whatnot coming out this year. You're talking about guiding, so you're, you're guiding if people come out and go on hunting trips and you guide them. Yeah, so in Uvalde, we're, you know, considered kind of the north star of the, the Golden Triangle of South Texas hunting, yeah. right? Big, big uh, free-ranging uh, deer. Um, so I grew up kind of guiding and opening gates on a 65,000-acre place out west towards Brackettville. So got to see a lot of the beautiful country down there. I got to see, and, you know, I got a deer lease that I'm on now. And so it's always been something I've been passionate about. Yep. Okay, you kind of skipped through this uh... – this Korean baseball organization, man, you were there for five years. Yeah. Uh, big decision to go there initially, uh, but it was an opportunity to make some money for your family, I'm sure. But tell me about five years over in Korea. I, like you said, it was a it was a business decision at that point. It was uh, go make the most of the opportunities for presented to you at the, at the time. Uh, kind of bounced around a little bit, um, burned all my options, and I was like, well, I'm going to go over here and make a career. So went over there open-minded, dove right in and, and was embraced by a, by a new culture, by a new fan base. And 
my wife and I didn't have any kids our first two years, and uh, we got to see all of that country, all the, the the history, the you know just everything about their culture. You embrace it. Yeah, embrace it absolutely. The food, the I picked up as much of the language as I could. It's kind of a tough language to do with the sounds, but I had some onion haseo and learn how to tell taxi drivers left, right, and straight. And uh, so what's, we, what's uh, the we made it work. Thing, what's the nastiest thing you ate? I ate live octopus, um, like where they just kind of hacked it up at your table and you uh, you went right right to it, man. It was crawling and sticking to the roof of your mouth. So that I did that one time. I didn't do that many times, but um, <laughs> that, that, I mean it was just a cool experience, and uh, I wouldn't trade those memories for anything. I I, I love my time there, and this year we came back because turned down an offer there. Um, came back here with those twin girls, and you know wanted to raise a family and, and be close to each other. And then COVID hits, and it, it yeah. couldn't have probably worked out better. What's the baseballs like? Are they a little bit more tacky over there? Have you noticed a difference? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's a white ball. Nobody rubs it. Nobody comes straight out of the package, man. You're, you're getting a ripped open so package in a new ball, right? and it's got some tack to it, um, and they fly. I swear that that place was the experimenting really? ground of the Major League ball because How about that? in 15 and 16, we had uh, every team had their own ball. And so our ballpark was kind of a smaller ballpark, and uh, we had the well, our ball literally said hard ball on it. The company was called Hard. And boy, did they go. So you had to learn how to pitch to get to keep those in the yard. So, um, and then after that, they kind of got everybody to kind of use the same ball in 17 and moving forward. But there's some definitely spikes in power from different guys. And, um, but, but it was good learning experience, obviously. Well, I'm sure, Brooks, that uh, you think you're better than me because I went to Sam Houston, you went to A&M. Uh, what was it like at A&M? It was a great experience, I'm sure. I loved it. I loved it. You know, I, I remember uh, my brother went to Oklahoma and uh, he's five years older than me. So we'd always travel around and watch him play. And I remember the first time I stepped. Um, he played baseball Olsen. too. Yeah. Older brother and younger brother. Older brother went to OU, younger brother went to Tech. So we're all, we were all big 12 at one point. Um, wow. And, uh, but yeah, my, uh, my oldest brother went to Oklahoma. We'd have gone up there we went to Waco and went PCU, did all that. But we went to Olsen and for a Friday night game and I just see everybody yelling at the first base coach and everybody's singing and, and doing this whole deal. And I'm like, I want to play here. You know, there's no doubt in my mind. This is where I want to play. So 